to Drinks Coach, episode 78. And this is a particularly special one for various reasons. Um, there's a couple of people to thank for today's episode. My wife, off camera, who's going to be trying my drinks in a minute. Say hello. Hi. And uh, also Wilfred, who's standing in for Reverend Hubert. Now, what is Reverend Hubert? Reverend Hubert is this thing here. This is a winter gin liqueur. And the chap on the front was Reverend Bell Lester, or Hubert Bell Lester, who um, was a decorated chaplain in the First World War and was quite a, um, a well-respected chaplain. But he also liked the finer things in life. You'll see that in the stained glass, there's like a martini, there's a tennis ball he used to play at Wimbledon, I believe. Um, so I, I really love the label, the stained glass, very Liechtenstein. Would that be fair to say? I would think so. Yeah, so very pop art. So we're very proud about how the label's turned out. Who's we? Well, that's me and my business partner, Tom Lester. Shout out to you, sir. Um, how did this all start? Well, Tom used to make limoncello and stuff at Christmas and started making liqueurs and also inherited his great-grandfather's World War I water canteen on which there was inscribed, probably with a, with a bayonet or something, a loose recipe for a liqueur of gin because they were making all sorts of horrible spirits in the in the in the trenches and they were trying to make it more potable by adding fruit to it and such so um we did try and kind of replicate the uh, recipe but it was terrible so uh, what we've done is we've taken the spirit of what reverend um hubert bell lester did and come up with our own recipe um this has been a very long and careful and diligent process um thomas came to me uh with an idea for a recipe he said try this and i think it's absolutely delicious but i think we can improve on it I asked him, where do you get your lemons from? And he said, the co-op. Uh, where do you get your sultanas from? Tesco's. I thought, no, we have to get a bit more specific about this. So now we have a drink that through development has turned to something with much more finesse. And it's made from a high quality gin, a premium gin. And then we add raisins, currants, sultanas, uh, a secret spice mix of things like cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice, etc. Um, but also to make this first batch we had to hand peel 4,000 lemons and 8,000 oranges, all from Amalfi, from the great Amalfi coast where probably the best citrus in the world comes from. Um, then it's all steeped together, then it's mixed together, then we, pr we press it all out and you end up with this. And we're very proud of it. Um, the idea was to make the ultimate Christmas drink. Uh, and it does taste like Christmas, doesn't it? I mean, it's like, just like Christmas. Um, we've had lots of uh, uh, um, comments on TV from the, from uh, all sorts of uh, wine and, and, and drinks journalists, and it's all been very favourable so far. So what I wanted to do was just talk about the drink and how it tastes, and then show you what you can do with it. Right, without further ado, a little taste. Can you pass that glass in the back there? Thank you. All right, I'll have a little sip and I'll pass it to you. So it's got this lovely chestnut colour. It's lovely. And it smells of citrus first. Then you can smell the juniper and the gin. And then you get this amazing hit of Christmas. It just tastes like a Fortman and Mason's mince pie, basically. And it's very versatile. It's delicious, isn't it? You can either drink it like that as a shot... Hopefully one day when I go you know, anywhere in Europe at pre skiing, they'll be going, three revs, please, mate. Bosh, bosh, bosh. It's absolutely delicious just as a Christmas shot. Or an after-dinner drink over ice, or you can put it into a hot toddy. Or one of the following things. First, I'm going to make a Negroni. Now, I've made, I think I've made a Negroni on this uh, channel before. Um, but this is our winter Negroni. So what we're doing is we're using this instead of a regular gin. And Negroni is one part gin, one part bitters. This is Campari, very famous. If you don't like it as bitter as that, you can go with Aperol. Um, the other option is a, a drink called Punta Mess, which is kind of half and half in terms of bitter. And we've also got a vermouth from Turin. This is a very famous one. It's a red sweet vermouth from Italy called Cocchi. And this is Vermouth di Torino, uh, and it's considered to be one of the best. Vermouth has exploded around the world. You could choose any combination of any vermouth and bitters that you like. Um, so without further ado, uh, it's as simple as this. Nice, sexy glass. There we go. Cocktail shaker full of ice. Then a measuring cylinder. And we're just going to add one part of each. That's simple. Mm. One part of a mouth. Not much room to work here today. 
one part bitters. Now usually when you make a Negroni you just stir it in a, in a martini glass or a big stirring glass uh, jar. Uh, but because of the pectin and the fruit and the lemon and everything in the drink, if you shake this, it gets a lovely creamy texture to it, a creamy head to it, uh, which is kind of the way we like to do it. And we don't want people to have to mess around too much. So this is as simple as this. Okay, so, Reverend Hubert, bitters and vermouth. That's simple. Just pour it in, ice and all, into the glass like that. Ooh. Didn't give much room for a garnish. There we go. But we like to garnish it either with a wedge of mandarin or a wedge of orange, just like that. There we go. What do you think, Emma? Tell me what you think. Looks pretty, doesn't it? It's got a lovely creamy head. Thank you. Lovely. <laughs> Clementine. I could drink those all day. Clementine would be good for a festive garnish. Yeah, we like clementine because it sort of talks Christmas. And that lovely sweet orangey edge to it really makes a difference to the drink. That's absolutely delicious. Emma, you can crack on with that. <laughs> okay, next thing I'm going to do um, is another cocktail inspired drink. Shout out to you, Luca Massilia, brand ambassador for this wonderful thing. This is called a Rosolio. And it's like another vermouth, or it's like a liqueur, it's like a, a, one of those Italian uh, bitter drinks, uh, like a sweet martini, if you like. But it's made with rose petals and bergamotto, bergamot, which is the citrus you find in Earl Grey tea. A lot of people don't realise that they think it's flowers, but it's actually just finely um, uh, peeled and dried bergamot rind. And there's a very, very small window of opportunity with bergamot. Around this time of the year, they come out. Very, very sharp juice inside. You have to be careful with that. But the rind, one bergamot could probably make 30 drinks. It's just so aromatic and pretty and fresh. So what am I going to do with this? Well, I'm going to start off again with some Reverend. Large shot of Reverend Hubert, which is 50 mils. Like that. Now we need some lemon juice. So I'm just going to get one small lemon and squeeze out the juice of a small lemon or probably half the juice of a large one, which will give you about 25 to 30 mils of lemon juice. Mm, smells like Christmas again. <laughs> this is a lovely drink because you kind of, on those days at winter when it's, when it's cold outside but it's bright and sunny, which is, uh, happens quite a lot, that's my favourite day, kind of weather in Christmas. It feels more like a summer drink, this. It's kind of like a portent towards the spring that's coming. It's not quite as wintry because it's got lovely spring flavours like roses and citrus. Now, we're just going to put in the other side, 25 mils. It's quite sweet as well, so it does the, the job of adding gom syrup or whatever else you normally add to cocktails. So, now I'm going to get the cocktail top again. Oh, I'm going to pour that out. Okay. And then you get a pre-chilled, not, martini glass. Get ready for this one, Emma. There we go. I love this one, because it really brings out the roses in the drink, all those spices and so forth. Uh, maybe a little garnish, just a piece of lemon peel, just doing like that. Squeeze over the top. There we go. Tell me what you think of that. I don't think I made one of these for you before. No, haven't. Okay. Um, answers on a postcard. We haven't come up for a name for it yet. Oh, that's great. Isn't that delicious? It's got like tartness and it's got sweetness. Can you taste the rose and everything? Per perfect for when you sort of bored of port and other things and yeah, it's something refreshing. That's it. That's the whole point. We're trying to find something which is more of a kind of a corpse reviver, a livener in between all the sort of cream sherry and port and roast turkey and you're nearly dying of gout aren't you by Christmas day it could work well while opening presents in the morning as well oh yeah breakfast, certainly this year breakfast martini put a smile on our face <laughs> right last drink we tried to think of a serve that everyone could use all year round or particularly at Christmas that's, <coughs> that's as simple as a gin and tonic 
Actually, I've got two more drinks to make. Um, and we came up with this one. This is basically just Reverend Hubert gin liqueur. And now it isn't the platform to talk about tonic, uh, mixers today, but I'll just say that basically all the mixers on the market now are pretty good. You can't, it's hard to find a bad mixer, but if you want to spend a little bit extra on your mixers, you're always getting much better ingredients. Shit in, shit out. So the more expensive the, the mixer, the better it tends to be. Um, if you want one that's slightly low in alcohol, uh, sorry, in, in sugar, if you're watching the calories, the London Essence brand is pretty good. But I like this one. Merchant's Heart is very, very punchy and um, got a real gingery kick to it. So this, this is, these are really, really addictive, actually. So I'm going to pour in another large shot of Rev. Mm -hmm. Then a little garnish of orange. Just rev and ginger ale to the top. Nice long drink, refreshing. Use that as a garnish. All right, Emma the guinea pig, ma cochon dand. There we go. Mm -hmm. Is it nice? Oh, that's, yes, that's a... It's good, isn't it? It's very, very smooth, and the ginger kind of chimes in with the ginger and it's in the drink. And that's more of an easy drinking session. Absolutely. If you're fed up with lager, fed up with gin and tonic, and you want something that's festive and easy to drink and refreshing, that's the one. Rev and ginger. Right, we're going to try and make one more. <laughs> okay, I'm just getting the ice from the other. Let's strain this out. Multitasking here. Very impressed. In lockdown, <laughs> waste not, want not. What I'm going to do now is a drink that was inspired really because we discovered that by mixing Reverend uh, Hubert with port, ruby port, two parts ruby port, one part Reverend, and you put it in a hip flask, it's the perfect drink if you're going out for a cold winter's walk or if you're the kind of person who goes stalking or shooting. Um, it's the perfect stirrup cup. It's like a rusty nail, but it's. Uh, I know, just even more Christmassy. And the, the reason why it works... The Boxing yeah? Day Walk. Yeah, the Boxing Day Walk, exactly. And um, the reason why it works so well is that port has a unique kind of tannin. Um, port as a wine, and I still haven't done a port show yet, but I should be doing one just before Christmas. Um, it, it's basically fresh fruit that's only been fermented for a day, and then they put in loads of brandy. So it's almost like preserved grapes in brandy. So the tannin is very fresh and very, very edgy. It's very present. And there's a lot of tannin in those fresh grapes. Um... So we thought, how do we make a drink like this without knocking people's blocks off? Because if you're drinking port and Reverend Hubert, you're going to end up uh, with quite a sizable hangover. So what tastes like port? And we went, pomegranate juice. Pomegranates have the same tannin. They have the same sharp acidity. Very, very Christmassy again. So this is what I'm going to do. Right. One measure of pomegranate juice any brand will do and you bought this from the local shop yeah this is a brand called pomegranate or something but all freely brands are available. available yeah freely available <laughs> um much much better if you can be bothered fresh pomegranate juice but that's a bit of a ball so okay so that's one of those one of these actually one and a half of these the large or the small the large so we're going for a triple measure over a double measure. Right. And I've recently realised actually the tiniest squeeze of lime just sets it off nicely. Just to add a bit of vibrancy to the pomegranate. Would a lemon work if you didn't have it? Absolutely, lime? yeah. Or well, you don't need to, you don't really need it at all. But... <laughs> okay. And I'd normally finish off with just a bit of ice cold soda water in the top, just to give it a spritz, to give it a prickle. But it's not necessary. There we go. Try that. And that's a Reverend Martini. Nice colour. It's a lovely colour, isn't it? It's a lovely pale colour. Oh, that smells festive. Well done, Wilf. You're doing very well. <laughs> that's my favourite. Is that your favourite? Yeah, Fantastic. I've never had it before. You've kept that one quiet. <laughs> That's seriously good, isn't it? Yes. Oh, it's almost got a marmy in it, like a kind of a tomato twang to it. Lovely. So there you go. We had the ultimate Negroni, the Winter Negroni. We had Reverend Hubert with Italicus and Lemon. 
we had, yeah, look at that, in this lovely Tiffany style glass. I love that. Thanks, Tom, for getting hold of that for me. Um, and uh, the long drink, which is ginger, and, uh, ginger ale and uh, Reverend Hubert. And this last one, kind of a winter martini, pomegranate martini, which my lovely wife, Mrs. Wadsack, liked as well. Well, Ms. Russell, I think I should say. Um, we're very modern, very modern. Um, so uh, there you go. There you have it. This is my first time I've told everyone about it. It's my bloody channel. It's the first time I've ever sold anything directly to you. But it's my drink. And you made and it we as need, well. And I made it, and we need to sell lots. Um, go to the website, which is reverendhubert.com, and buy it. If you can't find it there, have a look on almost all the other major online shops. It's on uh, Master of Malt, it's on Whiskey Exchange, it's in Fortnum Mason if you go shopping for lo other lovely things. Um, yeah, basically, uh, fingers crossed you'll find it somewhere, but uh, just just, just uh, Google us. Now, if you look at the background, we've got this lovely shrine to the Reverend. Uh, that's going to stay up until Christmas. So there, keep it nice and festive. See you next time.